Hi, I'm Tessa, and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. So I'm guessing this is probably about 10 pounds, which is a lot more than I was feeding her initially, but now I'm asking her to feed two calves and give us milk. So I'm giving her extra so her supply can increase. You can hear her mooing. I have my cart behind me that I bring with me. But once it gets to be, whew, probably about eight o'clock in the morning now because both calves are separated. She, she's ready. <laughs> she calls for me. <laughs> she wants her grain and she wants to be milked. So this is the third morning now that uh, I separated Charlie. So both calves now are separated from Gracie overnight. That way we can get milk in the morning. He was with her exclusively. Uh, for two weeks and then once he turned two weeks old I started separating him at night so that we could get milk because we weren't really getting milk for a couple weeks and so we were buying store milk but <laughs> here she is she's waiting for me here huh you ready the calves are ready they're pacing around over there bucket with me, otherwise she'll break into it. So before I give her her grain, I want to pick up any manure that's in the stall. That way once I give her her grain, I'm all ready to go. the compost bin right outside their yard here across from the across from their little barn that way I can just throw it over the fence into the compost check on her stall like twice a day. I check on her twice a day. Give her grain and either milk or just check on her and give her food. And also if the stall is a mess then I'll clean it up. And without fail she will poop in here. And unfortunately when she poops she loves, she loves to lay in it and then she just gets poop all over her udder and that means I have a lot of cleaning to do. Ha, huh. look at that dirty, dirty udder. All right, so I'm going to go get her grain and get it set up in here to start washing her off and then milk her. So I have this gate 
here that I close, since I don't have a milking stanchion, this at least shows her where she should be, and it helps me secure her. green in and hook her up here and then she gets started in happy. All right, then I attempt to have her move over a little bit. Good girl, Gracie. Yep. Good girl. So I push her a little bit. Then I have this dog leash actually. That I put around the back of her and hook it up to this chain. And she still kind of moves around. Uh, mostly when she gets comfortable, she just shifts her weight. She doesn't move around too much. She did kick two pails of um, two pails of milk for the first time the other day. So that day, even though I went out to milk her and I got some, I lost all of it. So um, I just have to be careful about that. So now I will go ahead and start cleaning her. Alright, so I have my bucket of warm soapy water with some dish towels in here and oh it's really dirty. <laughs> so I just have to start cleaning. And then once once my towel gets dirty, I don't put it back into the clean water. I usually will fold it and then wet it. Just pour some of the soapy water onto it. That way I'm not contaminating that water. But when it's all dried on here, you need a good amount of water to clean it off. I might only milk from two of the quarters today and leave the other two for the calves. But still, I'm gonna clean all of them that way. That way it's clean for them. We want their mama. So I used one rag to get all of the, the caked on mud and manure off. And now, now it's clean. But I'm still going to use another clean cloth to just make sure I have everything off. And even on her hair, like around the udder, I make sure that that's clean because that's the stuff that can fall down while I'm milking. So now I have a, I have a clean cloth I'm going to use to dry it, all the teats. And then I'm using an iodine dip. And this has to sit for 30 seconds to disinfect. So this is when I'll usually go out and pick up a couple of spots of poop outside. Chickens are so funny. Always tuna. She gets really excited whenever I'm picking up manure. She runs and she says, oh, I know this is for me. So she starts scratching in it. All right, so now it's been about a minute since I put the iodine, iodine on her teeth. So I'm going to go back in, wash her off, and get milking. All right, now that this has been on here for well over 30 seconds. I just get another clean rag and I wipe that off. And now I need to strip some milk out of the teat because that is milk that has been in there for um, at least 12 hours since she last nursed the calves and that milk can have bacteria in it because it's close to the outside. So I strip that out, that way it's not in our milk. 
And then I just cleaned my hands, got another clean cloth. So my hands are nice and clean. I'm going to clean, or what? Sorry, I'm going to dry her teeth so that they're nice and dry. And then I use some bag balm. And I put that around the top of her teeth where I'm going to be tugging a bit and rubbing that way. It doesn't get chapped and it helps lubricate it so my hands can move a little bit easier. So she's already finished her grain, so hopefully she's compliant with me today. I see her start to shift her weight. <laughs> I snatched the bucket up. All right, back. Back. Good girl, yes. So I try to get her to put her right foot back. But now her foot is really far back, so I, I can anticipate that she will move it forward a little bit so that her weight is distributed. Yep. I really like it to be just a little bit back. 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 There we go. That's good. Good girl. Thanks, Gracie. I don't really know if cows <laughs> register commands like, um, like dogs do. Like if I can praise her and say, yes, good job. Thanks, Gracie. And she knows that that's what I wanted. And I try to always say back when I touch her toe like that because it is sensitive right there. I don't want to hurt her, but she wants to get away from my foot, so she just moves her foot back. So I say back when I'm doing that. So hopefully one day I won't have to um, push her toe. <laughs> She'll know what back means and move her foot back. That's about how long I can last. This back teat is pretty small, so it's hard to get my fingers in there to make it the easiest. So on the back with my left hand, usually I kind of squeeze at the top and then roll my thumb down because it's a really small teat. And then the front one is big enough. Uh, the farmer, the dairy farmer that I got her from actually taught me, I hadn't heard this before, but he said to put your thumb against the teat like this, and then you pinch and roll down, and it kind of saves your, your fingers from hurting as much. So on the longer teat, I can do that, and it really does help. I can go a lot longer. So this is really nice. I have a lot of nice foamy cream in there. Once I fill the pail about a third of the way, I like to dump it into my main can. That way, in case I lose a pail of milk, I'm not going to lose everything. I like this pail because it has a lid. I can close it and nothing will fly in there. Gracie's really sweet. She's been done with her grain for a long time. <laughs> and I'm taking a lot longer than I usually take because I'm setting everything up to film it. And she's, she's being very patient with me. So the hardest part of milking 
And I think probably especially since I got, or probably especially since I started separating Jake at night, I do think that she is holding back cream a little bit because uh, regular milk, which is probably like, one or two percent milk that you get from the grocery store um that comes out first and then then she'll let down the cream and she can control that so <laughs> she can decide whether she lets down her cream or not and when i started separating jake at night i noticed that she was holding back a bit of cream which is good because i want him uh to get it I want him to grow really well, and he's massive, so he needs a lot of food. Uh, but since I started separating Charlie the last three days, I've noticed that I'm only getting a little tiny cream line from her, which again is fine. While he's still little and they're both growing, then that has the most fat in it, obviously. So we'll have less ice cream, but if it means that the calves will be nice and healthy, then I'm happy. So right now this teat here is slowing down. I'm probably getting cream out right now, but it's pretty slow going. So if I really work at it, I could probably get more. But like I said, I want a good amount to go to Jake and Charlie. My goal here is not to drain her because I want the calves to get milk. What I want is hopefully about three quarters of a gallon. Um, if we get three quarters of a gallon of milk a day, then that will meet our needs and hopefully her production um, steps up to that plus what the calves need. So I only want to take what we really need and leave the rest for the calves. So I'll probably get one more pail full and that'll probably be all that I need. And last night, so like I said, I've been separating both calves now for the last three nights. And so last night was Charlie's third night away from Gracie. And the first two nights I had to get the training halter on him to move him because he just didn't understand why he would be leaving. And then last night, um, as soon as I pour in Gracie's grain, when I come in here, Jake stands up and he says, okay, I know what's gonna happen, I need to go. He gets up and he gets ready to go around um, to go to the other gate for the calf yard. And so then last night when I came in, I poured Gracie's grain and Jake, you know, stands up super fast and goes. And then I, all I do is take one step toward Charlie and he said, oh no, no, I know what needs to happen. And he gets up and he follows Jake to the calf yard. And I just love cows so much. I love uh, that they love rules. And once you set a routine, they really seem to understand it and want to follow that routine. So um, I'm just so thankful that so far we've had a really great experience with calf sharing because I know it doesn't always work. From what I've heard, it only works like half the time where you can separate the calf from the mom for half the day and that way you can get milk for your family and then the other half of the day she provides milk for the calf or calves. Um, but I'm just so thankful that it has worked so smoothly that the calves, you know, don't put up any fuss whatsoever. Um, they just run back there and they're happy with it. So I think half, really half of it is the fact that Gracie is such a good mom and she really, um, she really consoles them and keeps them calm. Um, and then the other half of it is, I think our design here that we just have the, um, the cattle panel separating them because that means that they can see her all the time. She can see them and she can lick them and they still feel close together. So I think that's what makes it not traumatic and an easy, an easy thing to do, which makes me really happy because if we weren't separating them, we would be getting no milk right now.
no matter how early or late I came at night, they would always be um, draining her, and then we would just never have a chance to increase her supply. So, I'm really so happy. Now I'm all done milking. If I was just milking and not putting the calves on her, I would do another iodine uh, teat dip. But since the calves are going to come straight on her, I'm not going to do that. And looking at her bag, or her udder, um, it looks like it's about half full. It's still kind of dirty on the back, but I cleaned all underneath there. It's about half what it was. It's not empty. When it's empty, it has wrinkles like this all the way through, but that's still kind of full. So, and that over there is still half full. So I think they'll have plenty to drink this morning and then she will produce a lot during the day. Before I unleash her, I like to clean things up. That way if she's eager, she doesn't step on any buckets, break anything or hurt herself. So I'm gonna get these out into the cart. She's just so calm. I'm so, so lucky to have her. This part she doesn't really like. I All I have to do is grab a metal thing around where her lead clips on and pull it. It's like a quick release. So I just pull that. Sometimes she fights me or maybe she's trying to help me in pulling it off. So she usually stays in here and then I go and let the calves in here and then the calves will nurse. Good girl. Ah, yes, you are. Yes, I do love you. You're a sweet girl. You are. Jake is ready. There he goes. Good boy, Jake. Good boy, Jake. Charlie doesn't quite understand this part of the routine yet, so I'm going to go get him. Hey, Charlie. Hey, sweet boy. Hi. Hello. Hey, Ridley. <laughs> she says, what do you have for me? Can you chew and cud? They have been eating a lot of hay and grass. And Jake has been eating grain. He seems to go after the grain really well. Charlie's kind of learning. All right, let's get you to your mama. I do like to close the calf yard during the day. That way the chickens have their own space. All right, come in. So usually I just tap, tap his back and then to steer him, usually I can just walk behind him and tap his hip. Oh, he sees the gate open. Yep, that was easier than it was yesterday. <laughs> he says, I'm ready. Now they are both at it, and she is happy to see them, and they're both wagging their tails. They're happy to be with her. So yeah, they're going to that full side. Oh, look at that milk. Milk mustache. So I am really happy that we can raise them on milk because I've heard that they just grow so much faster, and they're so much healthier when they can drink mama's milk instead of the milk replacer. Here's such a good girl, Gracie. She's taking care of all of us. So now the last thing that I have to do is just, just pick up some more manure around the yard, which it's so nice. I love coming out here in early morning. It's so pretty. And right now it's nice and cool. And so working out here, even picking up manure is really nice. Having the electric fence here makes it a little bit more difficult to huck this over because I can't get right up next to the fence. So far they're minding this fence really well. All three of them have gotten zapped a few times and they're leaving it alone. We are training them on this fence um, inside their yard so that they know not to touch it. They know that it's a boundary and then 
right now we just have it along the edges of the fence line but maybe tomorrow we'll move it so that there's kind of a lane and it blocks off part of the yard um, because that's how it'll be when we're outside that way we know that they will actually use a lane and if we say that the lane will be eight feet you know it's kind of like a hallway do they feel comfortable going through that hallway or do we need to modify it um, that way it kind of replicates what we're doing out there and they'll already be comfortable with it and we know that they're not going to escape. So um, I'm happy about that because the grass in their yard is still alive and I want to keep it that way and the grass out on our pasture is looking so nice and it's getting to the point now where they should be eating it and so hopefully within you know the next week we'll be able to get them out on pasture and they'll be happy cows and I'll be happy because we won't be going through as much hay and grain. So for the fencing we got these O'Brien step-in posts and we have two strands. Eventually I would like to train them to one strand but while the calves are still little we have two strands and I think the bottom one is about uh, I think 18 inches high and then the top one is 34 inches high. And ideally, I think we wanted 22 and 34, but with the O'Brien posts, that's just where they connected. And then I do have pigtail posts in the corners, but they aren't insulated for that second one. We were going to just use those uh, little lastrator rings to keep the wire on there, but then it would ground out. So we got an extra insulated post to go in the corner so that it's not touching um, that pigtail post. So right now we have all of their yard with the electric fence around the perimeter. It's offset about a foot and a half. We'll have a lane coming out of that gate that will either go up towards that side of the pasture or over to that pasture. And so there will be a narrower lane so that they can come back and get to shelter and to water. So in here we're going to replicate that by creating a lane in between here and here. I don't know how wide it'll be, maybe eight feet, and we'll just kind of play with it. But that lane will move back out into the middle to see if they'll access that back corner still, like how it'll be when they're out on pasture. There'll be a narrow lane going to where they will start grazing. And so we didn't want to do that right off the bat because a lot of the area will be blocked off. And we didn't want them unknowingly to go through the fence and possibly break it or hurt themselves. So now it's a nice perimeter up against the permanent fence, but in the next couple days we're going to make a fence inside this area to test them a little bit more and replicate what we're going to do out on pasture. So we have two reels since we have two strands of electric coming out and so these reels I think are the speed right reels they are geared which it is a lot faster to reel them up and typically these reels are connected here to like an existing hot wire that's already energized but we don't have that and so we needed to insulate that so it wouldn't ground out so uh, this is wrapped on wire but on the wood post so it's insulated and then uh, Matt hooked up some PVC pipe so that whatever's touching on the reel won't get grounded out. So then we have that going out and around. So there's a starting point at one corner and an ending point on the other corner. And so we have the handle here, which is insulated. So we could unhook it here and it would be insulated. And then on the other strand, we have the opposite thing. So we have the handle that's insulated coming off and then the bottom one, this is where the reel is. And then we're using our Premier One IntelliShock 60 solar energizer, which is working well. 
and hooked up here and we just have an alligator clip running from the, the energized cable down to the other reel so that they're both energized. All right, so I just need to get them some more hay and then I get the milk inside and that'll be it for today. I love having my gorilla cart. <laughs> for the last couple days we were working on a project and it was filled with stuff for that project and I didn't have it so I had to carry all that by hand. This is much, much easier. So the calves are only just nibbling on hay right now, um, but Gracie is going through almost a, well at least a half bale a day, sometimes more. And so that's another reason why I'm really excited for them to get out on pasture so she stops eating hay. Uh, she does waste a lot, but the good thing is we are using hay as their bedding because it's actually cheaper than straw. And so whatever falls on the ground, that's fine. When I have to really clean it out where there's a bare spot, I throw some hay down there anyway. Um, so I will have to keep a supply of hay for their bedding unless I change their bedding type. Um, but again, I won't be plowing through it as fast as I have been if she's out on pasture getting all the good stuff. So I think things are going really well with Gracie and the beef calves. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> She's a licker. But licks don't feel very good because she has a sandpaper tongue. It's like a cat tongue times a thousand. But she's doing really well. I'm really happy that I am getting milk again and that the, uh, the calves are growing so fast and so well and calf shearing is working. We are training them on the electric fence, which uh, will be so great because then they'll be able to rotate around our property and they can get on fresh pasture every day. And so, so far so good. I, I did a lot of research before I got the cows and kind of heard a lot about what could go wrong and knock on wood. No, none of that has really happened so far, so I couldn't be more thankful. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching Little Lady Homestead, and I'll see you in my next one.